Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a favorites video for you, which it has been some time since I filmed one of those. I think I asked you guys recently and a few of you said you would like to see them, so I'm trying to get it up early in the month. Um, this month I still was a little bit behind. I wasn't as prepared as I'd like to be. Before I jump right in, I want to say thank you for checking out this video. Thank you for clicking on it. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you do enjoy this video and of course leave a like if you do. That's what it's there for. Also, if you are one of my subscribers or you subscribe today, make sure to hit the bell, turn on notifications because nowadays if you're a subscriber, it's very hit and miss that you will even know that I upload a video and um, it definitely shows too. So I want you guys to definitely be in the know because I post a lot of cool videos. I post giveaways, all sorts of things that you may be interested in and if you get those notifications you'll know and then you can pick and choose which videos you like but at least you'll be able to know what is out there. So I appreciate you guys and if you want to see what my favorite products were in the month of March and one that was not a favorite then just keep watching. My first favorite is a fan that plugs into my phone. This came in at work. It was a little Smashbox fan that was in like the little kit of things when they sent the new mascara. And I honestly was like, oh my god, I am always hot. I need this. And right now, if I look shiny, it's probably because I'm sweating. I have like a little sweat mustache going on. It's so hot in my house right now because it just started getting warm in Alabama. And when you don't have that air going, it takes a while to catch up. And look how shiny I am. Some of it's highlights, some of it's sweat. <laughs> so this fan is really cool. <sighs> cooling me off. When I use my setting spray at my vanity in the morning, I've been popping this in and this is how I've been drying my setting spray. And now I feel so spoiled. And like I'm so, I'm so. Does it sound different? I don't think so. All right, on to my basket of serious things. So first I'll tell you guys about my few skincare favorites this month. The first one is this Lancome Meal and Mousse. And as you can see, I've not gone through a ton of it, but it is so good. You don't need much. And right now, because it's hot, you can see how watery it is. It, if it gets cold, it's very thin thick. Um, but this is an amazing job of removing makeup. I take two pumps of this. Sometimes I don't even need a full two pumps. And I massage it into my dry skin just right on top of makeup. And everything is just washed right away. And then I go in with my cleanser. I am obsessed with this. When I run out, I will be very sad. But I've been using it this month and not every single day. So I've been switching it up between that and another long comb product. But on the days that I use this, oh, I love it. And I feel like I don't want to use it too quickly because I really think it's that good. I love it. The next thing is something that I was using and then I stopped using for a while because I didn't have it. And then I went and repurchased it. And oh my God, I fell back in love with it. And that is the Sunday Riley Luna Sleeping Night Oil. This is a retinol oil and I can tell you it made such a difference in my skin even just using it a couple of times I was like oh now I know what I've been missing um, this overall it's gonna help with fine lines which I can see a difference in and it also helps with pores so pores for me are one of my biggest concerns they tend to be so much smaller when I use this and it also helps to decrease my redness and irritation in my skin so for me this is a must-have I cannot let this leave my routine I've tried other retinols but this is by far my favorite the next thing I've only used three or four Four times this month but I've been using it about once a week and that is the purity made simple pore extractor from philosophy this has been an absolute favorite I feel like this does a great job of making sure my pores are really cleaned out so that I can use my retinol and it really helps to tighten them back up because you got to get them clear first and I feel like this does such a good job it leaves my skin feeling like it's been completely purged but it's not stripped it's not dried it's not one of those that I'm like oh my god now I need something to like soothe all the damage that that mask does. Not at all. It's very nice. It also exfoliates the skin and I love. I want to tell you guys about a couple of makeup tools that I've been loving. The first is this Morphe sponge that I picked up at Ulta Beauty. Mine is super dirty. I've been using it like crazy. Did I say Ulta Beauty? I guess that's what it's called. But I picked mine up at Ulta. It's super inexpensive compared to a beauty blender and I really love it. My only pet peeve is that it's not quite small enough to get right in that little inner corner of the eye, but I can make it work. I kind of squeeze it and press it in, but I love this sponge. I have to say that this is the, 
Apart from Real Techniques, this is the only competitor for a beauty blender for me personally, and I feel like it does a great job. Super inexpensive. I have been in love. I also have several of the Real Techniques brush crush brushes. The ones that have been standing out to me are number 300, the powder brush. I use this to sweep away any excess powders. I've also been using it to do like a little light dusting of setting powder in some areas if I don't want to pack it on. They're also really gorgeous, which does not hurt at all. And then I have the number 302. This one has a little bit of like a point to it. I've been loving to use this with blush. So this I get a little bit of precision. You can kind of put it right where you want and then blend it out. You could also use this contour with. Honestly, you could use it to highlight with if you didn't mind a little bit bigger brush. I want to talk powders for a second because I finally jumped in and tried the Lancome Absolute Powder. This is the Radiant Smoothing Powder and I have the shade, I still don't know how to pronounce this, Peche, something like Peche. Pishy, I don't know, but I have the shade. It is, I believe, the lightest. This is the best suited for my skin tone. I tried pearl. It was a little bit too much color. I could probably use that one in the summer, but I love this powder. Being someone who's a little bit more dry, I've never found one that really set my makeup but did not make me feel dry at all. I don't feel dry. I don't feel cakey. It just kind of lays everything down and melts into the skin. I love it. And a tiny bit of setting spray and everything just melts together like it was just one solid thin layer on the skin. And I love this powder. Next is a Sephora collection product. This is the Sephora collection micro smooth powder. Mine is in the shade Claire Light 05. So it doesn't have a lot of color to it. I'll kind of like swatch it. You're not really seeing anything but it has this very mild pearlescence to it and usually what I've been doing with this is really just kind of throwing on contour, bronzer, blush, everything and then this kind of tones it down and brings everything together. It melts it together as well. So I will use this as my last step before setting spray and then if I ever go too strong on my contour too strong on my blush or my um, bronzer is looking really dark compared to my skin tone this just kind of tones it down and it's perfect it's inexpensive very lightweight on the skin and I love it speaking of bronzer I have been using the Tarte Park Avenue Princess. This is not a new product by any means, but they have repackaged it. I got this one and I really just sort of fell back in love with it. It's a nice bronzy color. For me, this is definitely more a summer shade because I am rather fair, but it gives me some warmth. It really ties everything together. I do still contour with a little bit cooler tone that has a little bit of a gray brown kind of feel to it, but this warms everything up, softens the contour, and everything just looks so nice and summery and like I've just been to to the beach and I love it. I also love that this one has a little glow to it. This is not a matte bronzer. Um, sometimes I'll use the Marc Jacobs Tantastic because I want something that doesn't have shimmer but this one gives a really nice glow to your bronzy areas and it's just perfect for summer. Next I want to talk about a couple highlighters that have really blown me away and have been my favorites. They are the Milani Hypnotic Lights. I have the shade number two which is Luminous Light and the number three which is Luster Light. So this is what they look like. You probably wouldn't think much of them when you saw them in person unless you look close because they have a beautiful glow to them. They're kind of like an ethereal soft glow, but when you apply these, it is like nothing else. I will swatch these for you. They have a really pretty shift and I get asked a lot when I wear these, what I have on my cheeks. I'm hoping that is doing it justice. The luminous light is the one that looks a little bit pinker and then the luster light has that almost like orangey gold feel to it. Before we move on to other products, I've got to talk about a couple more Milani products while we're on that topic because I feel like lately they've really been killing it. I've been loving everything that I pick up from them. The first are the Amore Shine Liquid Lip Colors. This is the shade Charming. It has definitely been one of my favorites. It's a pinky, nudish, just perfect kind of tone. And I'm going to put some on because I don't really have anything on my lips. So I feel like this is a pinky nude that I can wear almost with anything and these are really long wearing. It has a nice shiny finish but they really stay on for a long time which is something I am looking for. I have lately been getting into more glosses but my only pet peeve is having to reapply all day whereas these will last for hours and I'm really impressed with these 
Also, the colors are beautiful. They have a lot of more muted, very wearable colors, but I would probably pick up any color in this. I love them so much. Milani's been killing it. One last thing from them is the Hypnotic Lights Holographic Lip Topper. I have this in the shade Luminous Light once more. So it's like a pinky, very light champagne. I'm gonna pop just a little bit on. So there it is, and you can top this with on a liquid lip. I have topped this over those, obviously. You can mix it with a gloss. They're very versatile, and they give such a beautiful shine to the lip. I mean, Milani, to me, has just been killing it. I'm in love, and yes, one of my favorite drugstore brands. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some brow products that I've just gotten back into. I had gotten in a rut where for a while, all I was doing was Anastasia Dip Brow, and don't get me wrong, it looks great, but I had like one brow, I never changed it, and I don't know, I just felt like I was kind of stagnant. So when Benefit started posting for their Benefit brow search, I was like, oh, you know, I can do that. I'll try out some different looks. And I started using all these products that I already had, and I really fell in love with them. So lately, this is all I've been wearing. Today I used Precisely My Brow Pencil. It's super simple. I love the Precisely. It is a very fine point. On super quick days, Goof Proof Brow Pencil is also a favorite of mine. I have all of these in shade three, which is what I have on right now. And then I also got this in gratis from work. It's the Full Proof Brow Powder, and I actually really love it. I know a lot of people think of powders as like an old thing that you don't really do anymore, but this works really well. And I love how they have it set up. I'm Sorry, that's upside down but they have a lighter on the inner and then a darker on the outer and it just really works so well that way you get that gradient feel to the brows it fills them in nicely and then the 24-hour brow setter as well has been killing it for me I really love it um, every brow product that they have I've tried I've loved the old gimme brow the new gimme brow all of these things so I think Benefit really is killing it on brows. You can, they have anything that you could possibly want. They have Cabral if you're a dip brow fan, which I also like, but I don't currently have. So these are mine and I definitely will need to restock and replenish because these are great brow products. The next thing I have only had for a couple of weeks, but it quickly became a favorite of mine and I was really blown away. So it is the Jeffree Star Blood Sugar Palette. I have to say, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I do generally like his products. The highlighters are truly not my favorites, if I had to say, but this really blew me away. I think this palette is insane. Every look that I've created has been beautiful. They're blendable, they're pigmented. They really are smooth eyeshadows. I, just something about them, I think this is just better than most eyeshadow palettes that are out right now. I feel like lately when I pick up any eyeshadow palette, it's just like, mm, it's okay. Um, there are a few exceptions to that, but really, love this one. I love that it has some red, some pink, some purple, some nudes. You get a little bit of everything and I feel like you can create a lot of looks with this. I have to say I truly, truly love this palette. I am, mm -hmm. it's definitely a favorite of mine. A more affordable eyeshadow that I have been loving is the ColourPop Laurel Los Angeles Super Shock Shadow Foursome. Now that can be said with any of their Super Shock Shadows. I typically love them. They're, I've never really had one that I hated. I have some that are more favorites than others. And I don't know if these are still available, but any of their Super Stock Shadows, I highly recommend. One of my favorites have been Glitz, which is actually a matte, and I feel like that one is just beautiful. It blends so nicely. It's definitely one of the best matte Super Shock Shadows that I've ever tried. And then a couple of glitters are Ritz, which was really, really gorgeous. It's got a beautiful glitter to it. And then also Heine, which is this one. It's like a coppery... A muted copper red type of color. Very pretty. The last one in there I also like is Shiny, which is another matte. It's a little darker. But really, any of these, I highly recommend ColourPop in general. I feel like almost everything is really, really good. But these Super Shock Shadows are one of my absolute favorite things to get from them. I have just a few more lip products to talk about, and then we'll go into my unfavorite for the month. Uh, first, I'm going to tell you that I am in love with this Kat Von D Setted Kiss Cream Lipstick in the shade Divine. This is just a beautiful pinky nude. I love it so much. They are creamy. I love the new formula. And honestly, with anything, I can wear this. I am obsessed. Lime green packaging is pretty cute too. But this color is like everything that I need for my fair skin and to give like a perfect pink nude. 
I love it. Two glosses that have really been favorites of mine are the CoverGirl Katie Cat glosses. I have two shades that I really love, which is Tabby Tees. This one's like a peachy, pinky kind of a shade. And then the other one is Ninth Life, which is a beautiful cherry red. And I can say both of these are absolutely gorgeous. I like almost every shade that I got I actually really like but these were definitely two standout shades that I really loved also if you go on my Instagram right now I have a giveaway going on I'm giving away every single shade of these to one of my followers so definitely be sure to check that out if you haven't already because you can win every single shade of this gloss okay I have one product which is actually from the same brand that one of my favorites is from it's from Tarte and I don't know what's what happened with this product it is the Tarte filtered light setting powder and I can honestly say I don't know what's going on with this everything just kind of broke apart it was super dry it was cakey it was like everything you don't want in your powder is what it was and it feels so light it feels like it would be like nothing like velvet on the skin kind of feels like the velvetizer from urban decay which also eh, didn't love too much i'm still the jury's still out on that one but this one after one try i was like there is no way i don't understand it is the smoothest and yet the driest powder i don't get it i don't understand what went wrong with this powder I can just honestly say I tried it with three different types of foundations. I tried different primers. I tried different setting sprays. I tried to make this work and it is purely awful. I'm, and I don't understand because I love Tarte. I love Tarte's products, but this was just really a big, big miss. If this is something you love by chance, then drop some info below and let us know what you're using and what it's working with because I would love to know what somebody is using this for when it went so badly on my skin. But maybe it's just me. It could be like some combination that I put together just did not work. Anything can work for somebody and not work for another. Take that with a grain of salt, but this really did not work for me. All right, guys, that was all of my favorites and unfavorites for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, be sure to leave that thumbs up and subscribe before you leave. Make sure to check out that giveaway on Instagram. I also have two other giveaways going on right now. One is in my teeth whitening video and the other is in my spring lookbook. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.